All right, well, it may be that I'm not man enough to play this game. Or not smart enough, one of the two. Um, I think what I'm gonna have to do and would desire to do is to reset. And as you can see on the map, uh, there's a handful of reasons why, right? Uh, <clears throat> but you can see on the map, if you've played the game a couple of times, I'm not gonna get into all the details of the rules and all the rest of it. You wanna learn the game, you need to go read the rules yourself, work it out, right? Or go watch someone else uh, do uh, tutorials. That's not what this is about. This is about, uh, I guess, uh, lessons learned more than anything else. So, there are a number of different factors or elements that impact certain segments of the game cycle, the turn cycle, the turn sequence. Uh, one of the first things you do in these games is you roll for, in the BCS system, is you roll for uh, snafu, which is your ability to execute stuff during the activ activation phase. And there are, best I can tell, there are four primary things that negatively impact the <clears throat> the snafu roll and they are quite simply uh, here on this little chart here you can see uh, and we're going to look at things that we have some level of control over right uh, by by smart play versus being fresh or game specific mods or things like that so i'm going to try and use a pencil to point these things out and i've got this sitting on a piece of plex on top of the map so it's kind of bouncy so you have to bear with me so uh, coordination is one issue. Uh, fatigue you can kind of manage. Uh, mixed formations you, is, is an issue. Uh, <coughs> uh, combat trains being in ghost mode, crossing the streams. And uh, combat training in the legal hex, well, that you're just a dumbass if that happens. So, uh, and then also uh, MSR blocked. So this, of those things, cross streams, coordination, and I guess ghost mode are the four most likely things to occur in the bulge version of this game. And I wanted to show you a couple of examples of, of that. And then I wanted to talk about headquarters as well because there are a number of things that impact headquarters and, and what happens to headquarters and where they are and where they are in relation to the units is also gonna drive what happens to units uh, on the map because uh, headquarters have to have a uh, safe path uh, to, or units have to have a safe path to their HQ. And that's the command radius plus five hexes. And then uh, obviously uh, while we're moving our headquarters around, we wanna take into consideration the coordination issues. Uh, and coordination is just where you're, you're too close to another unit or another formation. Uh, obviously trying to stay within a uh, 5 to 15 hex range of the ghost train uh, or combat trains I should call it otherwise it becomes a ghost train and uh, then there's isolation and that's going to be one of the biggest impacts that you're going to have to manage with your headquarters and I want to show you an example of that where I think where I've made some mistakes that uh, I would have adjusted my play had I fully appreciated the impact of the situation. And since I didn't appreciate the impact, I'm not gonna kind of wind it back and go, well, I'm gonna take a step off all of these guys because I food bought it up, right? So this headquarters here is Piper and they have a range of five. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> And as you can see, this unit here in Melma Day is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 hexes away. And the counting shall be inclusive, not uh, from and to. Uh, so um, when I initially did this, you know, this uh, American unit wasn't there. They, they pushed up this way and, and did their thing. They're trying to cause problems in Melma Day, right? Uh, so I, I did that and I was like, oh, well, it's uh, five, but one, two, three, four, five. Well, see, I was probably still off by a hex. Maybe it's just the parallax error working here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's, and that's plus five, right? So I thought I was well within 
the safe range. And yes, that's fine. You can be within safe range, but you also need to be within the command radius range. Otherwise, you're going to lose a step. And, and I'll just, you know, the rule is very, very clear and it's bolded and you kind of have to be stupid not to appreciate it. But it says uh, for each stack in the formation, uh, a unit that, or stack, that has no safe path or is out of command radius, destroy a step. Case one applies. Uh, or case two, uh, no safe path and is out of command radius, destroy two steps per unit. Well, blow me down, right? So that would be bad. So imagine if this unit was one hex further away, I would have lost two steps here versus just one step. So last turn, uh, at some point during the end of the activation, I would have had to lose a step for that guy. And he's a three stepper. And the, arguably, I think there's another unit here somewhere on the, there's some other stuff on the board that would have, that would have happened, had to happen too. Now, I don't know if that's a big deal losing a step, but I wouldn't have hung this guy out to dry knowing that he had just, he would end up with just two steps at the end of the turn. That would have been a much, much riskier consideration and I perhaps would have staged at Weimar here and then try to push through. So, so that's one thing. So there's one or two units here, they're gonna take uh, the extra step loss. And I already, I already went back and corrected because I, I had Piper way back here and totally screwed up. So I, I've already made one adjustment and kind of you know fudged it to keep the game going so I could play. But then as I was looking at the map and it became time for the 12th SS to activate, I thought, wow, you know, this is wide open here, so I really should drive through here. And I know that it's gonna cause a problem because I've got 12th uh, uh, Volksgrenadier and I've got uh, 277th Volksgrenadier and I've got 150th Panzer. <laughs> I've got, you name it, I got it, right? And these guys came, uh, you know, barreling down this way and just ran a mark and of course put all these units into coordination mode, which means in their third turn, they will all <coughs> suffer a penalty for coordination, which is a minus one that you saw on the little table. So, so what we're, now I don't know that there's a good way to avoid this. If, for instance, if you clear away here, uh, it would seem to me potentially worth it to try and power through a breakthrough area versus either waiting back here or not coming this way. There's no other way to go other than north. So I don't know what else you would do in this situation. So I think you would send 12th SS as my point. Now, perhaps what I should have done is made sure that I got 277th off the roads and uh, into the woods and perhaps into better situations. You know, coulda, shoulda. I only had a partial for these guys and failed the second, I believe, failed the second activation. So I could only move two movement points or flip it over and move it, eight movement, uh, four movement points. Um, that put us all in kind of, they are where they are and that's as far as, pretty much as far as they could have got anyway. Uh, 12th VG just kind of sucks and they're kind of screening here. I, I have a tenuous hold on uh, Rosharath here. I'm not sure that that unit will be able to manage holding on there. There's isolated units for the, the Americans. So it, it is a bit of a hodgepodge and I, I think we can do better. And I'm, despite the fact that I don't want to spend an hour resetting this and uh, going through the opening turn again. Uh, I, I think I might, unless someone can offer me a solution. Maybe, maybe I just, maybe I just uh, take the step loss here and just eat it. Or maybe I uh, pull this guy back to here. I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about, you know, there's one thing to play the game and make corrections. Another thing to just change it because you've screwed up, right? Uh, even though this is a learning game. Uh, I want it to be a learning game, but I want it to kind of reflect a little bit of the history. So 
Well, I don't really know what I'm talking about with you. I don't know even why I turned the camera on, but I'm just trying to articulate this for myself to more clearly uh, appreciate the mess I've got myself in. Maybe it will be fun trying to work this out in, in a turn three. So maybe I do, uh, maybe I do pull this guy back to here, or maybe I just minus a step off him. Hmm. What about Pi? What about this guy? One, two, three, four, five. So he's okay. <clears throat> I think that's all of Piper's units. Anyway, I lost a, I lost a couple of units. There's one here. Uh, did I lose two? I think I only lost one. All right. I guess uh, I need to go think about this. And uh, we'll come back to you. I'll let you know what's going on. I wanted to give it a little update anyway so you can see what's going on. I haven't touched this for three or four days because I've, I've, come, <laughs> I've come down here three or four times to sit down and look at this and get started. And I look at it and go, oh my God, what a, what a fur ball I've created for myself. And it's not the game system. Uh, the, the game system's cool. Uh, I have some questions about some elements of it that I'm not sure that I necessarily like, but uh, there's a whole bunch of new optional rules that have come out from other people that have been approved by Dean. I don't know how that they're going to impact the game or whether I should or shouldn't use them. This is not a game I'm going to play a hundred times, so I'd kind of like to have a clear, concise version of the game to play and a clear and concise understanding of the rules so that I can maximize the value of the gameplay and not spend my time you know, doing this, right? Doing this, underlining things, making notes over here, looking at all the different things that impact different things. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm sure a lot of thought went into how the rules were put together with this game, but I find myself flicking through a lot of pages uh, and primarily referring to the safe, to the safe path, referring to the uh, this index of definitions. I wish every uh, one of these definitions had the case for every rule that's relevant. That would save me a lot of time and or or a more, more robust index. Is there even an index? I don't think there is. You know, there's no index. That index would have been awesome. Uh, but it's not even the index, it's how rules relate to each other. That's the challenge with this game. I think that's it in a nutshell. Uh, uh, Snafu is impacted by uh, the cross stream rule, the coordination rule, the ghost rule, the MSR rule, H H HQ considerations have to take into consideration safe paths and command radiuses and coordination and ghosts and uh, 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 ghost train issues and isolation issues and well, obviously coordination and all the rest of it. So there's a lot, of, each rule chunk has some significant things about them. Combat is the easiest part of the game perhaps except for support. Anyway, I didn't want to turn this into a review. It's not a review. It's just mid-game, first-time guy trying to work it out. I've seen some great uh, Vassal gameplay, and I've seen some great uh, gameplay by other folks who are enjoying the game. So we're going to stick with it because I think it's a, a very, very interesting system. I will uh, uh, hopefully post some more stuff with you at some point in the very near future when I decide what the hell I'm going to do. Talk to you soon.